So we're here, we've arrived, and Kirsten's just drifting, so you can give the intro, Zeta. <laughs> Nous sommes là tous, vous comme nous, à l'attendre depuis des heures. Nous attendions sur la ligne d'arrivée à 18h. Nous avons patienté, patienté, parce que le vent, elle était à seulement 5000 des sables d'Olonne. Quand le vent est complètement tombé, elle est passée de 6 nœuds à 1 nœud et demi pendant des heures. Et là voilà, ce soir, arrivé, rentré dans l'histoire, Kirsten Neufschaffer, la première sud-africaine qui s'apprête à a passé la ligne d'arrivée de la Golden Globe Race 2022. Elle n'est pas juste la première Sud-Africaine à faire cela. Elle n'est pas juste une femme qui fait un exploit. Elle n'est pas juste la première femme dans l'histoire de la navigation à finir en tête d'une course, en tête d'une course, un tour du monde à la voile. Non seulement en solo, elle est solo, sans assistance et sans escale, à l'ancienne en plus, mais même solo ou en équipage, c'est la première femme dans l'histoire de la navigation à faire cet énorme exploit qui est Kirsten de Schaffer. Nous ne la connaissions pas avant, pourtant c'est un énorme marin qui a 250 000 à bord. Et je l'ai vu. Merci de <laughs> yeah, yeah, fantastic, eh? Brilliant. So, yeah, yeah. It's a <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we'll do the talking later, but you look... Yeah, yeah. Oh, you can just keep going, but just avoid the rocks, okay? <laughs> we'll keep an eye on it. So, uh, yeah, very good. We thought... Uh, you're okay now. The tide's okay, so you know, just carry on. Jean Luc's complaining because Jean Luc gave his matmut spinnaker to uh, Kirsten, and he thought, oh, she'll be arriving flying my one. So uh, <laughs> he's certainly looking. So uh, yeah, all kind of fun. And good old mini heart. What a team. So very exciting. Very exciting. You know. <laughs> ah yeah, right. <laughs> she just said she couldn't use it because because they had map mode on it. Anyway, it looks fantastic. Hey Kirsten, when you came here in Les Sable de Lon, you told me you are here to win the race. You won. What's the feeling? Good. <laughs> she said good. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, <laughs> very cool. Are you happy? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> mini ha ha, okay! Yeah, mini ha ha, okay. Uh, you can show the boats by the back, Jenky. Look at all the GGR boats back here. So a lot of, lot of people hanging out. Some of them have been alongside for about three, four, three hours or so. And uh, it's been really quite interesting. Uh, just dri drifting in. Whoops, my radio. Drifting in and uh, a very slow approach, but still got probably another half hour to go to the finish line but anyway we're here and everyone's getting hyped about the whole thing so uh, all very exciting and Minnehaha's got lots of grime up the back uh, a few little barnacles tiny barnacles and stuff the hydrovane's fine strapped up with a few different things and uh, the Watton Sea was working to the end everything looks pretty good actually the rig looks good um, hey Kirsten something I wanted Kirsten your bowsprit was droopy in the Saab de Lone before you left. Not that badly. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen it yet. But anyway, and we saw it in Hobart after you left on the photographs. And we thought, oh. Uh, but then we uh, had a look at the photographs in, in the Saabs and it had a little thick. But I haven't looked at it now. So anyway. No, no, really bad. Yeah. But it has moved since. Yeah. We couldn't tell you. We wanted to tell you, but we couldn't. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, all good. Yeah, yeah. Freedom Day! Yeah, I know. Freedom Day in South Africa. Freedom Day. So it's South African Freedom Day. It's the first South African ever to do a solo non stop uh, circumnavigator the navigation of the world. First time a female has won any uh, round the world yacht race via the uh, Great Capes in the Southern Ocean. As, that's fully crewed as well as. Uh, as well as not, you know, so uh, yeah, lots of different things, and that'll all come out in the story later on. So, all good fun. 
Yeah, all good fun. But now she's doing all of about half a knot. <laughs> so it could be a long time till I start the loan. <laughs> you want to have a go? Oh, here we go. Don't, it can be a long time to reset the loan, but such, how, such a beautiful time oh, yeah. to see this smile on the Freedom yeah. Day in yeah. South Africa, to see yeah. this girl who never spoke during the race with a haha okay, <laughs> and to see her today here. It's so yeah, amazing, cool. it's so very beautiful, cool. it's so emotional. She did it. That she is. wanted to win the race, she really wanted it and you always say that when we really want something, we can get it. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about being there at the end of the day, you know, it's all about sort of just persevering. And, uh, you know, she wore her heart on her shoulder, you know, she was really open when she was depressed and down and we'll never forget Lanzarote. Lanzarote when she came into Lanzarote, it was cruel. We didn't know how to talk to her, you know, it was so, so, she was so devastated that she was so far back in the fleet and she was really beating herself up because she just couldn't cope, you know, it was really scary. And then uh, you'd see some of the highs and her film, you know, the onboard footage was great because she just open up again you know so uh, there's some interesting stories to come in the future but uh, and through all of that it was you know she'd give the text you know the daily tweet would be yeah. text or okay and I can relate to that because it is distracting on a daily basis to have to send a signal like that and if you just do something regularly constant you don't have to think about it you do it but if you have to think of words or crack the jokes like all the other yeah. guys in the race it, it takes work and it takes you off the boat a bit and she really wanted to be at one with herself and is a very uh, amazing person so they're all pretty good it is a of course we all like them because we are following the ggr but she's such a character and if when tonight i saw katrin chabot coming here to salute kirsten for his arrival when i saw yesterday jan elias for the big jan elias that everyone knows in france saluting this girl who is making history in the sailing uh, it is a big moment. It's not just a new GGR entrant who is winning a race. It's a yeah, new, a, a big character, and I don't know what's her future in the sailing. But I can see her so much, so good, so beautiful in in a movie <laughs> like the Bernard Matessier movie. You know, she's so different from what we know, yeah, well, yeah. for what people like me, my generation yeah, knows. Absolutely. Anyway. She's, yeah, a, she's very mysterious too. She's in her world, in her one piece with her boat yeah. at sea. There's another part to it as well, you know, like there's so many people now are going to hear about Kirsten winning this race, winning the GGR, and they then look back and say, what's this big deal about the GGR? And they actually then look at what she's done and they think, what's this race? You know, like this. So absolutely. Miles. And Already they start to think, what? She's had no other contact, no communication, didn't even know whether she was winning the race or whatever, and uh, all her own food and water and all that stuff wasn't every night, you know. Yeah. And so it's really good for the GGR too because we always, we, everyone involved knows it's a really gruesome and ugly challenge, you know, it's really hard, super hard. Psychologically, physically, you've got to have a level of skill. And she's done all of that, you know, and so, uh, yeah, quite amazing, uh, quite amazing. I've got to say, she was one of the favourites from the beginning, not from the sense of, because she's just a, an amazing person, but 250,000 miles of sailing experience and... Uh, all the Antarctica uh, experience. Yeah, sure high latitude stuff, all really crazy, so uh, it was all very cool. I'm taking over the camera from Jane Jane, I'm not sure why, but anyway, I've got it in my hand here, and... Uh, that's, yeah, we're all organized. You manage the camera, I speak some French, I forgot to okay. speak French. I need help cut it down here. Du coup, on a parlé de choses assez émouvantes sur Kirsten. Oh boy. Moi, je Hang vous... I'm following the spectators. That's, that's the GGR, Rick. Really. got me worried. I thought they crossed the finish line, but they're not. They're just having a horn party. Yeah, yeah. Qu'elle yeah. passait la ligne d'arrivée, mais pas du tout. Tout le monde fait la fête de la corne de muse. Alors, vous avez peut-être aperçu là juste devant vous Damien Guillou dans un des dans un des zodiacs. Il y a d'autres skippers. Il y a Yann Herbert Jones qui est là également. Je ne sais pas où where is he, Yann? I don't know. Yann is Yann. Il est quelque part dans les bottes. Il y a d'autres. Il y a Jean-Luc que vous avez vu. Il y a d'autres skippers. Il y a deux skippers de la Golden Globe qui sont, okay, euh, yeah. qui sont là. Et surtout, ce qu'il y a ce soir, cette mer plate sans vent, parce qu'elle fait même pas un nœud de vent, là, elle avance pas. Elle avance pas, il se passe rien. 
Et je vais me taire et vous laisser écouter ce moment de silence suivi de moments de joie. Ce n'est pas juste une arrivée de course comme j'en fais depuis 22 ans au Sable de Lone. C'est juste un moment unique. Et je ne dis pas ça parce que Kirsten est une femme. Et je ne dis pas ça parce que c'est la GGR et que j'aime la GGR. Je dois l'admettre et je ne suis pas objective. C'est juste ce soir, ces quelques bateaux qui sont là, sont là pour pour quelque chose de différent, qui est peut-être le passé, qui est peut-être aussi notre avenir. Et puis, il y a quelqu'un d'autre qui est là, c'est Jean-Luc Vandenède. Jean-Luc, qu'est-ce que tu penses de Kirsten aujourd'hui Tu sens que c'est un moment spécial, un petit peu Not because she's a woman, but because tonight, no, no but wind, no she, sea. She is a woman, but it is not important to be a woman for this kind of uh, competition. Uh, you can be a man, a woman, or anything else. Uh, the, the oh, we forgot thing, the French. The main thing is the mental, and uh, and she has the mental to be the winner of this race. Uh, she, any anybody who want to do it. Can do it if he wants, Jean-Luc, but she really wants it badly. The she really wants it. Is that you? It is necessary to have a, a very strong mental to be able to do that and to want to do it. And uh, she wants to do it. She is the first one, and it's perfect. C'est la faute de Don McIntyre si on parle anglais, mais on parlait au français. Alors, pourquoi? Elle gagne ce soir. Qu'est-ce que tu sens ce soir quand tu regardes cette navigatrice Moi, de, depuis le début, elle était dans mes favoris. Elle était dans mes trois favoris. Moi, j'avais trois favoris. C'était Damien Guillou, euh, Simon Kerwen et elle. Et donc, euh, elle, a, elle a le mental pour faire ça. Et c'est, c'est principalement une question de mental. Il faut évidemment euh, préserver son bateau. On voit que son bateau est en assez bon état, on voit que ses voiles sont en assez bon état. Il faut évidemment le préserver, mais le plus dur, c'est d'avoir le mental capable de vivre pendant euh, plusieurs euh, semaines, plusieurs mois, tout seul, sans nouvelles, sans euh, rien de la civilisation euh, dans laquelle nous, on vit à terre. Et donc, elle a le mental pour ça. Et elle a les capacités pour faire ça, c'est elle qui gagne, c'est parfait. Et toi, ça te fait quoi Ça te donne envie d'en refaire une ou pas Moi, j'ai tout... Moi j'aime bien naviguer et euh... Euh... Je... ça me plaît ce genre, de... ce genre de compétition où en plus tous les gens ont une chance de gagner euh... parce que c'est des bateaux qui sont tous assez comparables. C'est un truc qui m'excite et que je trouve bien et... Et donc, c'est une compétition que j'aimerais bien euh, si j'avais euh, 10 ans de moins. Mais il euh, faut pas non plus... Euh, moi, je, je me penche plutôt vers de la croisière maintenant. Euh, mais c'est une compétition que j'adore et que je trouve euh, très très bien. Et vous, là, monsieur... elle va être obligée d'empanner parce que la bouée est là-bas. Et il faut qu'elle aille par là. Et donc, on va voir que ça ne va pas être facile. Je ne sais pas si elle va affaler le spi ou pas... Euh, je ne sais pas, mais visiblement, il faut qu'elle aille par là. Voilà, elle a fait son suivi. Voilà, ce que j'avais... <rire> Et vous, Yannick Moreau, ça vous fait quoi de voir Kirsten de Schaffer, la première sud-africaine, à gagner un tour du monde, ici dans votre ville, au Sable de Lonne, qui est la ville de départ aussi du Vendée Globe, et de tant d'autres belles courses non, mais Moi, je suis très ému ce soir, parce que cette femme-là... Elle est en train d'entrer dans la légende. Quoi. Elle a gagné un tour du monde en solitaire, sans escale, sans assistance, 234, 234 jours. Et c'est juste incroyable. Donc, euh, pour... C'est vraiment sans assistance parce que le... <coughs> on a, on a, sur ces bateaux-là, ils n'ont aucune communication avec la Terre. Ils ne peuvent pas demander un conseil, ils ne peuvent pas demander la météo, ils ne peuvent pas demander... Euh quoi que ce soit. Donc ils sont en autonomie totale. C'est ça qu'il faut euh, souligner, quoi. c'est ça qui est difficile, c'est cette espèce d'autonomie totale. Alors moi j'ai rêvé qu'elle gagne et donc euh, je suis très heureux qu'elle gagne et on va, on va fêter ça tout à l'heure avec les sablets euh, à Port-Olona et en plus j'ai, j'ai la chance de vivre l'arrivée de Kirsten avec Jean-Luc et ça me replonge <rire> quatre ans en arrière quand Jean-Luc, est arrivé... <rire> quand Jean-Luc est arrivé sous spi dans le chenal des Sables de l'Homme, 
avec une classe incroyable. Simon a fait la même chose ce matin, sous spi devant euh, le clocher de la Chaume. C'est beau, quoi. C'est c'est vraiment, ce sont vraiment de grands marins. D'ailleurs, je crois que dans le chenal, c'est interdit, je le rappelle, oui, des oui, sables oui, de l'Aune, il n'y avait pas eu d'entrée sous spi depuis son deuxième vent des globes il y a bien longtemps, Jean-Luc ouais. Vandenet. Donne some English, please. Some English, please. Uh, how now, brown cow? Is that enough? <laughs> no. Ah. It's, uh, yeah, Kate, uh, Kirsten's just done uh, a bit of a jibe. She's trying to jibe across to the line now and uh, still drifting. I can see the uh, South Cardinal and... Uh, Uh, yeah, a couple of bits, so she's still probably ooh, half, that, uh, not even half a mile, it's third of a mile or something. So, uh, look, they're playing up here now. <laughs> they're playing up now. Everyone, it was a long lunch. It's a long way, Yeah, anyway, look at those beautiful Golden Globe Race ribs. I want one. Yeah, well, <laughs> they're, they're fantastic. Huh? <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. So, uh, yeah, a lot of, lot of people here, a lot of media. They've been, media went out to get the pictures before got dark and um, it was probably going to be a press conference and so on but it, I think we're going to be too late so the press conference may be postponed until so uh, tomorrow. Okay, oh, point nine. So it's point nine of a monocle. Okay, so uh, how fast is she going? 1.5 knots. 1.5 knots. In case you haven't realised, here's Jane Jane. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, I'll look the other way. That's a booby trap. Like Say hello, Jane Jane. <laughs> the last mile is a big job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, the boy is there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very slow. Yeah. You could you could go for another swim now and just put the rope in your teeth and away you go. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> boy, there was a there was a lot of comments, Kirsten, when you're on your footy swimming off the back of the boat, hanging onto the rail. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Wow, what a lady. Amazing. What a story. So, uh, yeah. She has to pass the boy here. Yeah, the line extends for a couple of miles. The boy is on the left? Uh, yeah, they line up. Both of them line up. So The boy must be on the left? Uh, no, no, she's crossed the line. So, the no, the boy can... It just can creates anywhere. the line, yeah. So, she could actually come up and head straight 90 degrees and try and crop the line and then go but anyway yeah so um, yeah. beautiful boat so some technical things boring alert boring alert it's a uh, Cape George 36 okay um, it's one of the biggest boats in the in the fleet uh, maximum waterline length huge uh, considerably more sail area but also a lot heavier boat you know it's one of the heaviest boats in the fleet um, a lot of buoyancy up forward in the bow so uh, for southern ocean work, uh, we've spoken about this a lot, you know, it's ideally suited for heavy winds from above the beam and nothing could touch it. And in fact, if you look at all the records, the, the sort of technical speed records for 24 hours and for one week and all that sort of stuff, Kirsten basically knocks them all off because she's a good sailor and this is a, a potentially very fast boat. So, uh, um, you know, the, the beauty about this edition of the GGR compared to 2018, everyone thinks you need a Rustler 36 to win, like Jean-Luc, but you don't. No, you just need a no. duck to win, <laughs> yeah. just But anyway, to win. there's more to it than the boat, you know, as you saw with Simon when, when he came in before. Um, that wasn't, a, the uh, Biscay 36 wasn't considered to be a fast boat. But there's more to it, you know, it's a combination of planning, preparation, execution. You've got to be a good sailor, you've got to get all of those numbers right, and you've got to have good sails, and then it comes down to your attitude, how you're sailing the boat. And uh, Kirsten has always paced herself, you know, but she's always wanted to win. And boy, once she cranks it up, she really gets it going. <laughs> so, oh, all the boys here, <laughs> they're sort of, uh, yeah, some very famous Le Sable Delonian men there. Um, Bernard, the photographer, and uh, Guillaume, who's always out at every event, and the guys from the Port Authority, and or from the marina, and all that stuff. So, uh, great mates of ours, they're always doing us favours and helping whenever they can, and all that stuff. So, Le Sable Delone is really an amazing community. It's, uh, uh, yeah, quite exceptional. Great place to be. Uh, holding the GGR from, I got to tell you. So uh, all very good. I'll throw my two bobs worth in about the uh, Amoka press release. So it was good to we read can, that. We can so notice on. also Arnaud Boissier, who is a Van de Globe oh, yeah. skipper, yeah. just 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 behind us. Uh, yeah. All this, you know, it's all this, right. all this Van de Globe skippers is is true. Arnaud is living in Les Sables de Lons, so it's not too far to come. Catherine Chabot is not from Les Sables, <laughs> but this. 
Vendée Globe professional skippers who came tonight to salute Kirsten <laughs> and he showed the car. It's a sign that they recognize in that girl something different for everything we know until yeah, today. Yeah. I mean, this is just me, but it's, it's beautiful to see that. Yeah, there's quite a few here. You know, yeah, yeah, few it's a lot of people. Kind of cool. no, 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 no. I keep speaking yeah. English, I don't know yeah. why. I'm supposed to do the French. Yeah. Aido, would you like to do the GGR? I already put my entry fee on oh, okay. for the 2026. <laughs> no, I cannot, I have seasick. So, uh, a, few, a rundown, a technical rundown of the boat, a quick one for those that don't know if you're a non sailor, that white thing on the back, a lot of the entrants have got that, the white plank is a Watton Sea water generator, okay, hydro generator. It lowers down into the water. It's got a propeller on the top. When the propeller spins, it puts its, uh, electricity into the boat. So it's like a, a water generator. The other one, the big one with the red plank on the top, that's the Hydrovane self-steering gear. Uh, Person hasn't any real troubles with it, you know, she's maintained it and uh, there's a little black thing there on the back which you couldn't see but it's a walker towing log. So you drag a rope behind with a spinner on it and that's the only way you can tell the speed and the distance travelled through the water. Um, she's got a, a huge tiller there. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big boat, but inside, it's you've probably seen some of the videos and you can see the walkthrough, the 30 minute video about uh, all about the boat that we filmed before she left in La Sable alone at the race village, if you want to look inside, but it's like a typical cruising boat. And uh, she loves the boat, but I think she's gonna have to sell it. That's, that's part of the plan, I think, because there's a significant investment in that boat and uh, she needs to cash up, you know, because it's not, uh, I say it's affordable for anyone to do the race and you do it at different levels, but individuals have got different incomes and abilities, you know, and so she's been crowdfunding a lot of it and bits and pieces, but I think she's going to have to sell the boat, I'm not sure. So, um, or make a decision herself to sell the boat and move on to the next adventure. Um, so that's pretty cool, and uh, she broke a spinnaker pole during the voyage, and she's worried about the stem fitting right on the end of the bowsprit. It's got a bit of a kink on it. Um, so... Uh, uh, but it made the distance, it went the distance, and everything looks pretty ship -shaped. So, good to see her. She's powerful and strong and uh, looks healthy and all smiles and oceans. She's going to get a lot of, well, what would you say, a lot of pressure with media now. Everyone's going to be all over her, wanting interviews and this and the other. And I, and I really think she might embrace that as much as she was saying that, you know, you get the text not saying a lot. Uh, that's history, I reckon. That's just all over now. That's just her in the race. But it's yet to be seen how she'll handle that pressure. Um, and uh, Seb, our media guy, is managing it as well. I, I, presume, I don't know, but I presume it's very difficult when you are alone for seven months, more than seven months, just you and your boat, to just come back to the... Even if all we are all loving her and even the media and all of us, we just wanted to touch her, maybe it's hard to just come yeah. back to the reality. I've got a sneaky suspicion she's going to embrace it. Like, she's off her tree here now. She's yeah. really happy. You know, I think part of that was not to let her mind wander too far from the boat during the race, you know. She's had to concentrate and just, she knew it was a long way to the end, but let's wait and see. I mean, uh, hopefully she won't watch this little video when she gets home, but but I got a feeling she'll embrace it. She knows that everyone, a lot of people are following her and, and uh, they'll be inspired by her and she's an adventurer in her own right, you know, like the bike down through Africa and all those sorts of things. And exactly, you do she was that. So young, she was yeah, 34, yeah, 35, exactly. and she, she bites 30. I yeah, and you know, you, you, a lot of people say, oh, why do you do this sort of stuff? And I think the most common one, and sometimes the adventurers don't even know they're doing it, is to prove something to themselves, not to anyone else. When we, when we watch her, when we are speaking with her in Gijón or in Le Sable d'Olon, it's something, she has a special feeling with the yeah. sea. I mean, she didn't do 2,000, 2,500 uh, 2, miles at sea for nothing at uh, 35 years old. It's yeah. something special, I presume, to yeah. be at sea. For, and even Damian, he told us when he wanted to do the GGR, that he wanted to be alone, one with the sea for a long period, just to enjoy, to feel that feeling. Yeah. I don't know, I'm not a sailor, I should better ask you. Yeah, well, it was fun to catch up. I caught up to Damian with Damian today in the office, and uh, it was fun. He'd really like to do the GGR again if, if the situation works right, but he's leaving it for a make a decision in about a year and, and talk over the family again and things like that and he's a professional sailor as well and he has different opportunities and offers but he really will would like to try and do the GGR again he, he loved the boats he loved the sailing style of the GGR he was he was at one with the ocean he wasn't there like a he's a bit like Kirsten you know
know, he, he wasn't there like a professional sailor. He was there as an individual that just wanted to do it. So anyway, I think there'll be an interesting fleet lining up for 2026, for sure. Certainly the entries are uh, coming in and the inquiry rate is uh, very high about compared Anyway, wow, it's a slow trip to uh, slow trip to the finish line right now. Um, what else can I tell you about the rig? Uh, it was done at um, up in uh, Canada at uh, oh, oh, I'm in trouble, Ada, the island. It was no, the island where she did the um, did the refit, Prince Edward Island, Prince Edward Island, I think it was. Yeah up in, yeah. in uh, Canada. Uh, she was trying to get a boat out of there during COVID uh, from Canada getting it down south and she couldn't get it through and she stopped at Prince Edward Island. Oh boy, I hope that's right. Um, uh, you know, in, and it was getting really cold, the winter was setting in and she uh, really landed on her feet because the community got behind her, they did fundraising, but the workers sort of, they charged for some bits, but they gave a lot of work for free and, and they were really skilled workers because they were used to doing with fishing boats and really solid, wholesome sort of shipwrights and uh, everything and, she, and Kirsten herself said so many times she just landed on her feet there i mean it was just the perfect place to do a refit completely out of the way no one would ever think to take a boat up there to do a refit but maybe they will in, in 2026 i'm not sure but and a couple of them i just heard one or two of them had made it down from the island to come here today um but it was a bit of a scramble and I, i'm not sure where they got off the train in time or whatever but uh, if not they'll see him at the dock anyway um, but that's a whole story in itself you know the way she did the refit and rebuilt the boat so uh, um, yep, quite impressive. Now we've just about she, stopped. She's doing less than <laughs> we've one stopped. Hour, right? huh? the night oh, yeah, could, yeah, could do. Yep, could do. You're gonna have to. <laughs> this she could get very exactly, embarrassing. Do you remember? She did exactly the same in Cape Town. I know. She just stopped for four hours. Well, look, there's a saying here. It'll come down to the last man standing, but that might cause controversy as well. How long are people gonna stay? And uh, all that sort of stuff. Anyway. We are thirsty! Hurry up! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yep, this is uh, this is quite oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, Holy dooly. <laughs> Sheepers. This could turn into you know, when I did the BOC I had a reputation of I had a reputation of oh, you, I had a reputation of every time I came to a finish line we sat. And in Cape Town when I wrote uh, no, it was the worst one was in Punta. The race committee comes out with this and they sat beside me for four hours because they didn't want to go back once they got to me. And Sydney was even worse, you know. You're just coming up and you just think you're there and all of a sudden park. I parked for 12 hours, you know, just by the cliffs under Wollongong. So it's really just kind of crazy, but that's part of the deal. And um, anyway, we're going we're gonna to be late. I think they might be. Oh, they won't be streaming this. Thing. There was quite a few people on the river. Nine o'clock. Oh, we have a concert. We have a private concert. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> 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 Ramons avec ardeur, au mal ils sont les voiles, le ciel est pur et beau, pur et beau, déjà la blanche étoile qui de nos matelots, matelots, ainsi par le Girls start whistling, whistle up a wind. <laughs> up, up, oh, there's Ian. There's Ian. There, so Ian, a wave. So they can see who you are. Yeah, there you go. Ian Herbert Jones, straight from Puffin, <laughs> Cape Town, and now to here. Catch up with the uh, catch up with Kirsten. So. No, but it's there. Euh, pour arriver jusqu'au sable d'Olonne là. Si. Quand il chante. Euh... Euh, la chanson bretonne. Trimatelo. Trimatelo. Ah c'est un fameux trois mois et on a, on arrivera. Wow. Meanwhile, well, this is going on. Um, Kirst is doing exactly about one third of a knot, I think. You can probably follow it on the tracker, but it's not very fast. Not very fast. 
sable de lunch, j'ai une prime si mais tu si, veux. Mais si, on devrait faire celle-là. Allez, vas-y, Jean-Luc. Allez, tu te la rappelles ou pas okay. Yannick peut t'aider. Allez, on fait un petit concert. Ok. Y a Yannick, tu veux qu'on fasse un petit, un petit trimazolo Moi, non, je peux pas. Non, c'est pas trimazolo. C'est compliqué, c'est en breton. C'est un fameux trombone. Ah oui, c'est un fameux trombone. On va chanter, c'est un fameux Allez, trombone. parce que de toute façon, elle est moins dans nous, là. On n'est pas couché. 1, 2, 3, 7. Comme un oiseau, il s'est Si Dieu veut toujours droit devant, nous irons jusqu'à 100 dollars. Je pars pour de longs mois en laissant Christ. Santiano, d'y penser, j'en ai le cœur gros. En doublant les feux des sables Tiens, et tiens bon le vent. Diano, si Dieu. Okay. Don't we did the French? Now it's your turn. You do the English. I know. What do I know? On top of spaghetti, all covered in cheese. I lost my poor meatballs. When somebody sneezes, <laughs> she is not obliged to leave the boy on court. Uh, no, no, it's a line. It's a line. Yeah, we're just doing a quick check with the race committee, and uh, you know, just to make sure it's uh, all okay. No, uh, John McIntyre <laughs> is going to sing. Uh, uh, How uh, can we sleep uh, on the oh, no. <laughs> no, that was 2018. I've forgotten the words. <laughs> <laughs> no, my mother said I was never going to be a singer. I can dance. Oh, you should see me dance. Oh, baby. <laughs> well, the numbers, the numbers are dropping fast now. <laughs> This is boring alert. You know. <laughs> no, is that boring? Don, Don, tell me what does it mean, mini haha? Mini haha. Oh, this. Um, no, it's an American, um, American Indian uh, uh, thing. And I forget the actual uh, definition, but it's, it's it goes back to uh, this, the American Indian. Oh boy, all the people on here, if there's no, anyone left can, watching. We can ask her. Yeah. Kirsten, give us a, rent, a name, the, the mini haha. It's the Indian... Uh, she's like a native American uh, mythological figure. Okay, Native American mythological figure. And what was the last bit? Calming waters. Laughing waters. Laughing waters. Laughing waters. Laughing waters. Ah, okay. Yeah, laughing waters. Okay. So, yeah, it's a mythical thing from the, yeah, from the Indian. When you are speaking about the boat, you forgot to sing. Ah, no, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> You've got a sore throat. <laughs> Mini Haha. Isn't that song great? Isn't very, uh, Mini Haha's song is fantastic. It's really cool. I didn't know cool. that the waters were supposed to, to, to laugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh boy, everyone's sitting here, it's starting to turn into Christmas with all the nav lights coming on and uh, all that sort of stuff. But we are getting closer, I'm not sure how much closer, but um, oh, there's the breakwater, the, the breakwater and the, and the mythical channel, you know, mythical channel. Yeah. We could, if we all whistle, it might whistle up a wind. You know? No, we cannot whistle on the boat. No, I know, but you, when, the reason you don't because you get too much wind, but maybe, uh, maybe that's going to allow enough wind or something, I'm not sure. Do you know what about Abilash? Abilash? He's 130 odd miles behind, maybe now 120 miles behind. And we reckon uh, it's going to be sometime very early on Saturday morning. Uh, very early on Saturday morning, yeah. Um, and uh, because the wind is dying, we know that. Kirsten just missed it by like an hour or so. Uh, if she had it kept going, we would have been in. And uh, for, our, for us, for me, Uh, the nightmare of trying to come up with ETAs has just been horrific. But yeah. anyway, um, she's nearly there, and plenty of people are still hanging out with her. And uh, um, I feel sorry for the people on the marina, the people yeah, on the we'll wall. Wait for uh, yeah, that's that's sad because um, this is very frustrating. But anyway, that's and yacht that's racing. I think one of the beautiful news yeah, is her mother making. Cool. Her mother is yeah, yeah, she's waiting to get on board as well. But um, we can't do anything until she crosses the finish line. So. 
uh, everyone's committed to I think it. I need to give you the gear, yeah. I'm afraid. No I'm problem, no problem. Okay. So, uh, there's the finish line down there. That's it there. So you need to cross the brew now? Yeah. But why you got a, a green thing? No, this is the start box. Jane and I are just having... Is you, has everyone met Jane? Has everyone met Jane? <laughs> oh, come on, Jane. No, come on. Jane is come on. As, as mysterious and magical as Minehaha. Minehaha. No, no one's... Yeah. Oh, oh, we've lost Jane. We've lost Jane. <laughs> anyway, yes. We could we could shut this down, I think, and then start it up when we... Oh, but then we cross the finish line. Huh? Maybe start it at the river. Like we, if we saw the comments, we could say, is anyone there? <laughs> <laughs> and then we could decide to shut it down or do whatever. Um, I'm not sure. This is, uh, yes. Oh, there's that fishing smack over there. It's the blue one. Really, really. It's really hundred. Yeah. Yeah. The fishing smack. The, the name of the boat is Paul Emile Pajot. It's a traditional wood boat, and Yannick knows better than me. Paul Emile Pajot is a is a painter. Painter. Famous <laughs> Les Abdelon painter. And, and what's the boat? Pardon? This boat. Ah, ça. Yes. This, this boat, boat, boat. It's a gazelle. A gazelle. In, in, go this? in good French. Yeah. Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire? Attends, on parle anglais, mais pourquoi? Ah, ben je sais pas. <laughs> <laughs> because, because, <laughs> because you asked me in English. It's the dance boat. We all speak English. C'est un bateau de pêche traditionnel des sables de l'homme. Et uh, c'est vraiment un modèle traditionnel de la pêche classique euh, à la sardine au thon euh, des sables de l'onde et c'est un c'est l'un des derniers exemplaires qui existent et qui flotte et donc c'est un c'est un bateau très joli comme vous pouvez c'est quel âge il a à peu près c'est alors cel, celui-ci j'ai peur de dire une bêtise mais euh, la période de, de ces bateaux c'est fin 19e début 20e yeah. so to make it short it's a it's a fishing boat from <laughs> the from the 19th century her name is a gazelle it's a kind of fishing boat was going to the sardines and the tuna yeah. uh, 200 years ago. It's one of the lightest one yes. here uh, from this period. To these do two guys. In English or in French or what? Uh, English first. I should ask to Jean-Luc Vandenet. I don't know this, this lady, beautiful lady, this who is she? What is her sailing experience? It's me, the beautiful lady. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Jean-Luc, Jean for the, all the French people, and in the, even the English speaking people knows Catherine Chabot, but if some two or three don't know her, who's she? Who is Catherine Chabot? Yes. That is the question? I'm yes. Romanian, I but don't know. But many people won't know here, <laughs> and they might be interested. In Catherine people. Chabot is uh, the first the woman people. who... Rent my boat for the third Vendée Globe, and she was the first woman to finish the Vendée Globe. She finished sixth in the Vendée Globe with my boat. She rent my boat about uh, two or three months yeah. before the start. One and a half. One and a half yeah. months. One and a half. One and a half. Yes, before the start, uh, I rent my boat to an English guy who. who do the transatlantic and after he bring back the boat and he tell me I have no more money and I cannot uh, rent you the boat anymore and I cannot enter in the Vendée Globe. And I meet Catherine in the boat show of La Rochelle and uh, I ask her, uh, I ask her um, tell me uh, how is your boat for the Vendée Globe because she was supposed to enter in the Vendée Globe with the uh, old boat of uh, Loïc Perron and she says uh, no I don't rent it because uh, it is not uh, it is not enough stability and I don't like this boat I say oh you don't uh, enter and uh, she asked me and, wh and what about your boat I said my boat is uh, on the on the harbor <laughs> is ready to go <laughs> but <laughs> and uh, we talk together she visits the boat with a uh, a friend of mine uh, who was working for me and uh, and she ran the boat and uh, plenty of people come to help her and she finished the Vendée Globe 
uh, in sixth position. Hundred and forty days. Hundred and forty days. Yes. Tell us about uh, in in a few minutes. Tell us about your adventure in the Vendée Globe. In the Vendée Globe. Uh, all right. Now I'm thinking about the arrival, the twenty third of March, uh, the nineteen ninety seven, and it was a little bit more windy than today. <laughs> But uh, I didn't know, so you know, I had what, right? a lot of problems uh, with the boat. No, 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 I capsized, I, I capsized in the uh, ocean, in Indian Ocean, and I had no more uh, generator, just uh, renewables, and uh, a lot of things have been broken, etc. And no more radios since be between the Cape Horn and the arrival, so it has been a great a great, great journey, a great experience. Yeah. Oh, you can imagine that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, with uh, but I was a little bit slower than Jean-Luc with the same boat. He, 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 he completed the, the the race in 116 days and me 140 days. So you can imagine. Uh, the, the the big sailor he is yes, crazy guy crazy guy <laughs> 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 I mean it's a stupid question but I'm not a sailor and I know nothing about sailing and does Kirsten today remember you a little bit this atmosphere at this time uh, 20 years ago it was 20 no 30 20, years yeah. 20 something not, not exactly 30 years but not very far 20 I don't remember 26 years ago uh, the feeling you mean i uh, yeah because you are a pioneer in your w way in your race the vendee <laughs> she's a pioneer in this one and it was just to i don't know we were two can. women uh, isabelle autissier exactly. and as simon she had to there was not uh, she just a class but uh, she down, I think. yeah she had a problem with a, a rudder she had to stop and she finishes she finished uh, quite uh, before far, uh, before me she she uh, she was supposed to to be she she was the first sailor woman uh, to complete uh, around europe uh, around the, the world race uh, with stop isabelle tc and uh, yeah today for me it's, it's a very special day because uh, the first time a woman win wins a uh, Around you, around the world race, bon. and um, I'm very, and I'm, I, oui. I, I don't know her, père. Kirsten, but I feel very close to her because I can imagine the adventure <laughs> she, <laughs> she, she, she lived during how many two hundred and thirty-three days, without knowing um, her position. I mean, the weather yeah. a little yeah. bit with the radio, but. Jean-Luc told me once that when you are racing, don't having the position of the other entrant, it's extremely um, perturbant. Yeah, I had the, the same experience during my first Vendée Globe because I, 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 I sailed it twice. And during the first one, because I had no more uh, communication, I didn't know where were the others. But because I, I was behind, uh, there was just a pit goss and uh, we communicate. I, I had the information through the radio amateur. I don't know how to say it. Ham radio. Ham ra radio. It was. Been, I, they, they didn't. I was not able to speak, but uh, I was listening the the position of pit goss, etc. Yeah, a big experience. Thanks to Jean Luc. Okay. <laughs> Merci. Just a bit of an update. Kirsten's going backwards, I think. Uh -oh. <laughs> because the tide's going the other way. <laughs> She's doing a she does. Yeah, I'm not okay. sure. It's uh, nothing much is happening in a hurry, that's for sure. Um, nothing much at all. So uh, this is over there. Everyone's sticking with it, though. It's, um, oh boy, we've got probably 400 metres, four or 500 metres maybe to the finish line. Um, so she's those made some progress. Rocky, it was the same. Yeah. We were very close to the finish line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, it's very frustrating. Very frustrating. Anyway. 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 Very frust
So here she is, stuck in the middle. Everyone's sort of hanging out, just waiting. Boy. <laughs> Everyone's. <laughs> <laughs> it's a party atmosphere out here at the moment. At least it's not raining and it's not too windy, you know. <laughs> so. Not too windy. Yeah. <laughs> Some wind would be nice. So uh, this could be. Oh, we got our blue lights on. Huh? On the rib on Mona. We got the night light on. <laughs> okay. So. Um, we, 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 when we shut it down and start when they... I do don't know, we could go for a swim. They go for a swim? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. yeah. i got no idea how many people are still watching us. Um, it's a bit long, but it's not, Jane, Jane. it's not our fault. It's not our fault, it's the women. People want you to keep pointing at a person. Sorry? People on YouTube want you to keep pointing at Kirsten. Okay, we want to keep pointing at Kirsten. Okay, so i got to get up there, up there at the moment. Um, that was a diversion because... There is uh, a lot of time still left to go. So, here we go. We're now pointing at Kirsten. I think she's as frustrated as we are when this sort of stuff happens. You can sit here for hours. And uh, my fear was that it could go through to midnight or something. And uh, currently, uh, yeah, we're going backwards. That's not... The it's not Kirsten going forwards. <laughs> We're actually going backwards on this boat. Kirsten is dead in the water right now, and uh, uh, yeah, going absolutely nowhere. So, uh, and it's getting slightly darker. The light on the iPhone is really—it uh, picks up and it doesn't accentuate the, the, the thing. Eh? Oh boy, yeah, she's—you can't quite see the expression on Kirsten's face. She's big smiles, smiles everywhere. But uh, what can she do? Nothing. We just sit. And this, this uh, transmission's been going for 40 something minutes. I haven't got glasses on. So, uh, anyway, I must admit, there's always some things, you know, when you look at someone's boat before they set off. And I, I looked at those solar panels on her life raft before the start of the race and thought, hmm, not sure. But they've done the distance. And uh, uh, she's had some pretty heavy weather. So that's cool. Yep. Oh boy, the poor people in, in Les Abd alone, they'll be wondering what the heck's going on, but they can see there's no wind, and uh, uh, so here we sit, here we sit. Oh, there's Damien. Hey, just wave, Damien, so people can see you. Yeah, Damien's there, a <laughs> GGR entrant that uh, uh, retired into Cape Town. So, uh, um, starting a Russell 36 with PRB and Jean-Jacques uh, backing him for that, which was uh, really quite, uh, quite an impressive entry, uh, that one and a whole story in itself as to how it didn't progress and the trends you know the the rate of attrition on the race so i always thought that uh, we would see maybe half the fleet finish so i'm as surprised as everyone that we've now only got three boats uh, uh, left racing in the ggr but that's uh, a signature i suppose of what the race is one out of nine finished the first race five out of uh, 18 finished the second one and this time around we've got 16 starters and it looks like we're going to have three finishes so uh, uh, something about the GGR is tough, not for everyone, that's for sure. Yep, I think there's, uh, there's, there is no wake on the boat at all. We sit, oh but there's still, yeah the, the, the marks are, uh, uh, yeah that's the, that's the South Cardinal mark over there. So I don't know whether you can see it. You might see above that rib, just off of here. So we're all four five miles. There, that's that's the South Cardinal mark. Doing half a knot. Doing 0.7 knot, but uh, 0.5 miles away. Okay, 0.7, 0.5 miles away. Okay, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Someone's swapping over here. Yep. <laughs> we got some pirates coming on board. <laughs> this is the this is the LSO team. There's a lot of hierarchy there. This boat must make it back to Lasab de Loan, or Lasab de Loan is in real trouble. <laughs> it's half the city, it's half the city officials there. So uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, 
Yeah, we're really uh, incredibly grateful for the community of La Sable de Lyme with the GGA. Yeah. She's a French deputy in Paris. She's following oh. the GGA from the beginning. She's one of the <laughs> yeah, national yeah. politic person who came here every time for to, to, to see the start and yeah. now they are involved for Kirsten. Yeah, Kirsten. fantastic. I don't yeah. know how, but I see her big smile and I think <laughs> she's happy to see Kirsten. Yeah, bravo. Yep. Nous parlions de vous, Béatrice. Je disais que vous étiez... Uh, tout sourire et puis euh, vous avez suivi pas mal la GGR. Don't, don't faire un live sur la page de la Golden Globe Race. <laughs> yeah. C'est bon de voir Kirsten. Cool. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, incredibly lucky to have the support of the community of Los Alpes alone and uh, you know, the city officials and the uh, Bondi region and Pays Loire as well supporting the GGR. Massive amount of logistics get uh, provided for us you know, at the start with the race village and so on and then he, even here on the finishes it's quite substantial. I have to tell you, I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen but I've seen what the plan is. It's all a bit of a secret at the moment but it'll be announced later on and the prize giving for the GGR will be on the 24th of June on the Saturday and it's going to be a big weekend and there's some amazing things planned. So if you ever wanted to come to La Sable alone and you've got a vague interest in the GGR, that's the place to be and the time to be there because all of the entrants will be there and they'll all be accessible to the public and uh, it's a big public party, the prize giving. And uh, well, I can't, I don't want to spoil, don't want to be a spoiler. Um, oh, we're running out of battery. Jane's got to plug it in. So. Uh, uh, so yeah, so big weekend. That's that's the time to come and have a have a holiday. So the weekend of the 24th and 25th, um, quite a few things planned there. So uh, that will be fun. I look forward to it. So Kirsten is still moving, and it could be the current that's actually pushing us along. The boats are bunching up. It's quite an interesting, fun atmosphere here at the moment. It's quite fun. Jane's plugged the battery in now to uh, the phone, so we can still keep going. If anyone's still left, if you haven't gone to bed yet, you know, <laughs> I've got no idea who's there. But um, it's a bit of a... 2,200 people. That's not bad. G'day, to, g'day everybody. <laughs> Say hello. <laughs> Bonjour à tous. Alors, on va refaire un petit peu de français. Uh, I don't know if you are 2,000 people speaking English or 2,000 people speaking French. I presume it's both. Uh, yeah. So, did yeah. you tell everything, ab told everything about Kirsten already? Uh, so I can uh, tell it about. in French. Yes. We don't know a lot about the Freedom Day. I'm only imagining what the South African Freedom Day is, but today is Freedom Day in South Africa. What does that mean exactly? Oh, I'm not day? sure. It's freedom, I think, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Freedom. Kirsten, what's the Freedom Day mean in South Africa? Freedom, okay. Yeah, celebration of freedom. Maybe I think, because the end of, of the upper height or something like this. Maybe it's the end of the upper height. Yeah. Nous sommes de grands ignares. We we are all not very good because we should know. We presume it's the end of the upper height in South Africa. Donc du coup, nous sommes. Nous sommes. Nous sommes de grands ignares et et Catherine est en train de chercher. Que, que représente exactement la jour de la liberté parce que Kirsten... On le 27 d'avril uh, 1994, les South Africans de toutes les races, langues et creeds stood in long, winding queues to exercise the democratic right to, for which so many have uh, fought and for which so many have sacrificed. Okay. C'était une apparemment à défiler pour, euh, pour ouais. la paix de toutes les 80, mais alors donc le 27 avril 94. Et donc si je vous le fais en anglais, en français, mais il n'y a pas beaucoup, je trouve que c'est pas très précis. What happened? So Ada, you, you've been to Cape Town recently, what did you think of Cape Town? So the first democratic oh. elections held in South Africa on 27 April uh, 94. These were the first post-apartheid post elections, okay. national ah, elections, okay. so, to be held yeah. in South Africa when anyone uh, could vote regardless of race. Okay. <laughs> thank cool. you, thank Catherine. You <laughs> so what did you think of Cape Town, Ada, when you were there? I knew nothing about Cape Town, a little bit about the history of the country, but not so much and nothing about the town. It's a beautiful country with beautiful, very warm people and I loved it. For the short stay I stayed. Alors, 
Alors du coup, on va, on va parler un petit, peu, un petit peu français encore, parce que nous avons beaucoup parlé anglais. Pour ceux d'entre vous qui nous rejoignent en cours de l'août et qui ne savent pas qui est Kirsten Schaffer, euh, cette jeune femme de 35 ans, elle bouge sa barre dans tous les sens pour essayer de faire avancer le bateau qui n'avance pas du tout parce qu'il n'y a pas de vent. Ça ne vous aura pas échappé depuis au moins une heure que nous sommes là et depuis 18 heures que nous attendons Kirsten, c'était il y a 4 heures déjà. Elle arrivait toute la nuit, elle était à 7 nœuds presque. Elle était à 6 nœuds encore, à, juste à 17 heures. Et puis d'un coup, le vent est tombé. Et comme ils n'ont pas le droit dans cette course-là, évidemment, à mettre le moteur dans moins de, de, de 250 000, euh, elle ne peut pas mettre le moteur et nous sommes tous avec elle. Et nous lui serons pour le temps qu'il le faudra, alors que nous sommes à une mille de la ligne d'arrivée, eh ben, nous sommes là, nous attendons. Et dans une mille, ce qui se passera, c'est que cette jeune femme de 35 ans... Yeah, there's a line extending between the North Cardinal and South Cardinal, so... Uh Whichever gets you across that way closest, then we can tow you. Okay? <laughs> Sometime in the next couple of hours, okay? Yeah. Or tomorrow. Or tomorrow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ah, en fait, la ligne, elle est tout près, on la voit, elle la voit, mais pour l'instant, euh, elle, elle, elle se refuse la ligne, à elle Kirsten. Est la elle est entre la bouée qui est là, là. Ah, qui est voilà, la bouée Alors, du nous, si je mets, et la jetée. Regardé, regardé parce que moi, voilà. la... la ligne d'arrivée se trouve entre la bouée du nous, juste à droite, euh, dans votre champ, ouais. et puis... Euh, et, et puis euh, l'autre bouée est ici, donc nous la voyons, c'est tout près. Elle est tout près, mais, mais cette ligne d'arrivée se refuse à elle. Alors qui est-elle C'est une, est, est une femme qui fait des aventures, non seulement maritimes, parce que je vous disais tout à l'heure, 250 000, de convoiturage de bateaux, les mers Mais du sud, elle les connaît de par de cœur, elle a fait je ne sais pas combien de voyages en Antarctique. Euh, mais au-delà de ça, elle a fait d'autres aventures. Je crois qu'à 25 ans, 24 ans, elle a fait 10 000 au moins kilomètres à vélo. Et c'est là qu'elle a appris le français, parce que Kirsten parle anglais, mais elle parle aussi français. Vous, vous le verrez tout à l'heure. Pendant, pendant la, la conférence de presse, elle parle français. Elle l'a appris pendant qu'elle a traversé l'Europe à vélo. Mmh. Il y a un petit peu de vent qui vient, Jean-Luc nous dit, oh, il y a un peu de vent, il faut en profiter. Donc on va essayer d'en profiter et de la passer, cette ligne d'arrivée. Voilà, elle va passer sa grand voile. Qu'est-ce qu'elle va faire, Jean-Luc Elle va passer sa grand voile de l'autre côté. Voilà, il y a un tout petit peu de vent. Voilà. Et peut-être elle va l'offer un peu. Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire le fait Ça veut dire se rapprocher du lit du vent. C'est-à-dire, euh, quand le vent vient de là, ben, on se rapproche du lit du vent. Euh, au lieu d'être comme ça, on se rapproche un peu. D'accord. Bon, bon, on va voir si elle l'offre alors. You're wrapping yourself up here. Je ne sais pas vous quel est votre sentiment, là vous voyez Jane Film Kirsten, je ne sais pas ce que vous voyez exactement dans, dans la nuit, en tout cas ce que moi je vois à chaque fois que je vois son visage c'est un grand sourire, peut-être aussi l'impatience d'arriver enfant, mais un grand sourire surtout, je crois ouais. qu'il le savoir. Le problème, c'est que là, ici, elle a des repères, mais quand ça arrive en mer, on n'a pas de repères et on, est, on sait qu'on est coincé. Ce qu'on espère à ce moment-là, c'est que quand il y a des compétiteurs pas très loin, c'est que les autres aient aussi pas de vent, évidemment. Mais euh, euh, il faut apprendre la patience. Et c'est exactement d'ailleurs, Jean-Luc, ce qu'elle a vécu dans le poteau noir, parce que Kirsten a passé presque un mois dans le poteau noir. Non, Alors... non un mois, nous oh, bah, pas loin. rien. Ah non, j'exagère pas, mais Michael Guggenberger <rire> ou Jeremy, ben, Jeremy l'a passé en un jour et demi. Oui, mais alors, elle, elle est passée très est, et le poteau noir est beaucoup plus large à l'est qu'à l'ouest. Mm. Et je pense que ça a été peut-être une de ses erreurs, c'est de passer trop ouest. Maintenant, elle est passée trop est, pardon. C'est ce qu'elle nous a dit d'ailleurs, maintenant... dans un fond de col, elle a dit qu'elle a fait une erreur en allant trop à l'est. Évidemment, sauf que après, 
comme elle était à l'est et qu'il fallait remonter au près et que son bateau au près n'est pas un foudre de guerre, eh ben, elle a été dans une position plus favorable qu'à Bilache et elle a un peu coupé le fromage par rapport à Bilache et donc mmh. fait une route un peu plus courte que lui. Donc ça a été mauvais pour la partie poteau noir, mais ça n'a pas été si mauvais que ça une fois qu'elle l'a passé le poteau noir. Mais quand donné comme elle, parce qu'on se rappelle au début, au départ, avant le départ de la course, elle, elle m'a dit en tout cas à moi qu'elle voulait la gagner à Lanzarote. Elle mais était tout le monde veut la gagner déprimée. quand tu fais une course. Tu ne pars pas dans une course si tu ne veux pas la gagner. C'est bien, mais quand tu arrives au poteau noir, que tu as fait déjà 20 000 milles ou pas loin derrière, et que tu es là pendant un mois comme ça, Mais tu pas pendant. D'abord, ça n'a pas duré un bon, mois. Allez, trois semaines. Mais non, ça n'a pas duré trois ah, semaines bah, non si. plus. Elle a passé... Mais non. Oh, C'était long. Ça... C'était long, je suis d'accord. Elle est restée à peu près, euh, en tout, une dizaine de jours. Mais, une euh, dizaine de jours Oui, oui. Pardon, no, it's not true. Ah, si she she wasn't pas. only 10 days in the doldrums. It was more, it was more than that, I think. No, it's not. It was 10 days not so long. long time. Some of them I feel like it was now. one month, at no, least. No, no, no. <laughs> no, mais okay, but that is wrong. C'est les exagérations d'Aïda, ça. <rire> J'ai trouvé qu'elle était coincée là depuis des années. Ça y est, elle redécolle là. Elle redécolle. Le... You go, ah, you go. Le... You go. <rire> Allez, elle est repartie à un de ça. Elle est une fouine. Elle a un de brise. Alors, il y a de l'espoir, il y a de l'espoir. Il y a un petit peu de vent qui se lève là. On n'est pas sur des réglages fins. On va peut-être. She's running a bit of a wake. You can see a little bit of. She's probably doing a knot and a half now, two, maybe even two knots. So she's underway. There's a bit of. There's a bit of power in the sails. Uh, this kind so. of boat, if uh, when he start to to uh, to go a little bit, he create some wind and uh, <laughs> he goes. No, yeah. but that's yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this kind of boat is very strange. Because as soon as you arrive to take a little bit of speed, the, the boat is very heavy and he keeps his speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, at the contrary, very light boat, uh, they don't keep the speed like that. Yeah. Ah, C'est intéressant, Jean-Luc, tu ne le dis en français aussi Ben, je le dis en français aussi, je dis que ce, ce type de bateau qui est très très lourd, uh, l'avantage, c'est qu'une fois qu'il est lancé, et eh ben, il se crée du vent apparent, et, et en fin de compte, il a une inertie qui fait que le bateau ne s'arrête pas. Alors qu'un bateau beaucoup plus léger, à chaque vaguelette, il s'arrête. Et c'est une des raisons pour lesquelles j'avais raccourci mon mât, parce que je trouvais que ça ne servait à rien d'avoir une grande surface de voile, alors que ce type de bateau avance assez facilement par petit temps. Vous savez comment on est... C'est le courant qui nous dépanne. Oui, oui c'est le courant qui nous dépanne. Oui, oui. Ça veut dire quoi nous dépanne nous, nous, nous empêche d'aller dans la bonne direction. Pour moi, elle est à... Ouais, parce que je What pense qu'elle doit faire... What Catherine is saying is actually it's the current who stop us to go in the right oh, the direction. Stand, it? Yeah, it's the other side. A little bit of tide on the left. On the left yeah, Going on the left. So try to go a little bit more on the right. Go right, go right. Yeah. Yeah, you can head straight across. You'll cross the line quicker if you go a little bit to starboard. Yeah, we should push a sponsor, Zeke. She's got Zeke on the gunnels there. That's all wet weather clothing and stuff. And now we're losing it. North Sales was another one. That's, that's pretty obvious. You've got North Sales. Uh, Scipio, I'm not sure what Scipio is. Uh, GBYC, I think that's the Gout Bay Yacht Club. Yeah, it's it's Gout Bay Yacht Club. Coney Solutions, yeah, not yeah. sure. Eddie, Eddie Aston. <laughs> Eddie was one of the big time workers that was working closely with Kirsten doing the refit. I know that. And Contender Sail Club. Baltic Creek, I think, is a wine. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Kirsten, what's Scipio? Sk Skippyho. What Scipio? What? Scipio? Yeah. yeah. Export logistics. Something like that. That sounds like a logistics company or something. Okay, maybe in Africa. Yep, Scipio. <laughs> 